Thank you, Conley. Good morning. Everybody doing okay today? How did they sound so far? Ah, good. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk with you today about belief, about faith, and especially about trust. They're closely connected words. I'm focusing on trust, and I'll explain that in an ongoing fashion. For now, I'll just kind of tell you my thesis statement, which is that trust is an essential part of being a healthy human being. And uh, of course, we can put our trust in different places, and we'll talk about that. We continue to walk with Jesus, coming and seeing what he is doing, trying to figure out what he does, how he is, and glean what we can from him that will strengthen us in our own uh, lives um, as we try to be good and faithful disciples. Well, disciples, that's a churchy word. Some people call themselves followers of Christ. I think that's kind of passive. Uh, Dallas Willard used to say apprentice, you know, like it's on-the-job training. The word Christian means little Christs. So we are like Christs in the making. It's an ongoing process. So today we will think about trust together. And I'll give you your takeaway right now. I gave you the thesis statement. Here's the takeaway. Um, finding a way to trust God and also finding people in whom you can trust. The more we can trust both God and a few good human beings, the healthier and more secure we will be and we will feel. As you notice, I didn't just say the healthier we would be, but I added that word secure. And when I say that, I mean that full of trust in God and good people, maybe your church family, we can feel more certain in times of uncertainty. We can feel more grounded when the earth seems to shift under our feet. We can feel more safe when our cities and countries around the world are anything but safe. I'm saying that if you truly trust God and have a few trustworthy friends around you, the world can't grind you down the way it might. You will cope with the stress and anxiety that our news can produce in us. Uh, and you will have hearts that are much less troubled, as Jesus says in our text. Uh, it's, it's that re resilience that Conley was talking about last week. So let's look at our brief texts for today, but let me pray first. Uh, here we go again, Lord. Please open your word to us now as we try to listen and learn. You have invited us to come and see, so we will. What do you have for us today? Make us stronger from having been here today than we were when we arrived. Through Christ, amen. All right, an old, the best Old Testament foundation I could think of for trust was one that many of you know very well. It's from Proverbs 3. We, you heard it in the call to worship. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding, that is, at least not always on your own understanding, not exclusively on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to God and he will make your paths straight. And then... Jesus, speaking to his, his inner circle on that last night, of the night of the Last Supper, in the middle of it, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And a different translation says that last, renders that last sentence, trust in God. Trust also in me. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Piste. 
Oh, some, some heads bobbed up when they heard that. Piste, it's a Greek word. It's a Greek word that means faith. Piste means uh, belief. Piste means truth, a trust. Trust. I gave you two versions of John 14.1 to illustrate this. The New International Version translates piste as believe. The New Living Translation uses trust. Uh, now, believe. Belief is very important in our lives. To have people believing in us makes a big difference. Uh, in the 1800s, there was a boy who struggled in school, had a hard time with his assignments. He was partly deaf, but he had a mother at home who really believed in him, who encouraged him, and he went on to be considered America's greatest scientist, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. In the 1900s, there was a sickly child who had to wear a brace on her left leg, and the doctors told her that she would never walk without that brace but her mother told her she would. And she chose to believe her mom and she later became an Olympic champion runner, Wilma Rudolph. People can find strength and resilience in the midst of very serious challenges if they just have people who believe in them, if they are reminded that they are valued that they can be strong, that they are loved. We all need someone who believes in us. But I choose the word trust today because I think in our language it carries a nuance that helps us get closer to the Greek meaning than belief or faith. What was that Greek word? Oh, good, good, you remember. By the way, it's also closer to the Hebrew word bata, which means uh, for trust, something like a sense of well-being and security that results from having something or someone in whom we can place confident trust. See, I think the phrase, I believe in God, is a little too simple, even maybe misleading. Almost anyone can say it. Most of us here would not be afraid to say that in public. I believe in God. You would say to me, of course I believe in God, Pastor. I'm sitting here in church. I even pray sometimes. <laughs> That's fine. But you see, we all believe in Billy Graham, too. But he's not going to save our eternal souls. Or let's take someone who's alive. Pastor Conley here. He's a fine colleague, and I trust him. I believe in him, but he can't get me into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> yes? Who needs to be heard? <laughs> I believe in Jesus Christ sounds to me, it can sound a little too much like intellectual assent to a fact. A historical figure, right? We believe he existed. I believe in Jesus, of course. He lived 2,000 years ago. He wandered around Israel and so forth. So what did he mean when he asked his disciples to believe in him? I mean, there they were, sitting, celebrating the Passover together. Of course I believe in you, Jesus. You're sitting right over there, or reclining, as they did. You're reclining right over there. You're eating lamb and horseradish with me and washing it down with wine. Of course I believe in you. So what was Jesus really trying to say? Well, here's where I come up with that word trust. I think he was saying something like, put your trust in me and trust yourself to me. Um, I think trust conveys, conveys it better than faith or belief in our English language. Putting my trust in Jesus means I choose to depend on him, and I can surrender myself to him because I trust him. I trust him so much I'm willing to make myself vulnerable to him in the prayer of confession or in my private prayers. And why do I trust him? I trust him because of what I read about his teachings in the Bible. I, 
I know what he accomplished for the salvation of the world. I know what he has done for me already and what he continues to do for me. And I know because the Holy Spirit confirms it within my spirit. Um, he's trustworthy. I can trust him with my eternal destiny. Now, wait a minute, Pastor Greg, as some of you who biblically literate and theologically astute people might ask me. Wait a minute. What about Ephesians? We studied that last year, and it says there in Ephesians 2, faith is a gift from God, not of ourselves. But you're, sounds like you're saying that trusting God is a choice, an act of human volition. How does that square up with faith as a gift from God? I'm glad you asked. I certainly believe that the capacity to respond in faith is given to us by God. But intentionally putting our trust in God is like the human response to the gift of faith, sealing the deal. It's parallel maybe to putting our trust in human beings, is it? Isn't it? I mean, but that's not saving faith. I can trust Lindy. She can't save me any more than Conley could or Billy Graham could. But we entrust ourselves, some of our deepest thoughts, feelings, and longings to our, those people around us who have proven themselves trustworthy too. And, and that kind of trust is also more than just believing that Lindy or Conley are trustworthy. It means I am taking the risky step of trusting them enough to give my, part of myself to them. It's risky. But it's hugely important. Our human relationships are hugely important. All of us have certainly had a time, or probably several times in the course of our lives, when somebody came alongside us in a time of crisis, and, it, and they bailed us out. Or at least they stayed with us until the crisis was over. They saved us. Of course, that kind of saving is different than what Jesus does when he saves. Friends save us for survival on earth. Jesus saves us for eternal holiness in God's presence. And thank God for both. Friends we can trust and a creator in whom we can entrust ourselves as well. So to use the uh, title of the sermon, you can trust yourself to trust trustworthy people, not everybody. And you can also trust yourself to trust the Lord who has proved himself trustworthy. You can entrust yourself to him. Trust. As I was uh, putting these thoughts together, I remember the time I had to trust in the 1990s. I, I gave my brother a gift certificate to go skydiving and I brought it to him and he said, no way, I'm not accepting it. I would never do that. I, I don't remember what I gave him instead, but I took the gift certificate and I went skydiving. <laughs> and that requires trust. I mean, I, I, of course, believed that planes could fly. I had seen that parachutes could convey humans safely to the ground, but uh, when I strapped my, my instructor onto my back with that parachute, got onto that plane. I had to put my trust in the plane and the pilot and the instructor. And when I stood at the edge of the open doorway at 10,000 feet all at once, I had to really take a step of, oh, it's faith, step of faith? No, I trusted them. And uh, I had to trust that that parachute was going to allow us to float controllably and safely to the ground. And it did. It was fantastic. It was so cool. I've got a VHS tape uh, of the whole experience. And it's got Tom Petty singing, free falling. <laughs> yeah, it was good. But that was a time that I understood the difference between Believing that something could be true and actually believing in it, putting my trust in it. So believing that there is a God and showing occasional respect 
um, is different than believing in Christ and entrusting my life to him. Up in Estacada back in those 1990s, I believed that skydiving could be safe, but then I put my trust in those professionals and that equipment when I dived out that hatch. And Jesus invites us not just to believe that he can save us, but also to let him do it by intentionally putting our trust in him and then walking with him day by day. Okay, thinking practically for a moment, let's, a couple of things that are happening right now. How about the upcoming election? Is there trust involved there? Don't we, don't our votes come down to the level of trust we have for each candidate? Are they honest? Do their policies, if we can understand their policies, if they'd ever say them, do they make sense? As I've listened around, I sense a lot of mistrust, distrust, of our highest level candidates. But we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And as such, we are also called to be good citizens on earth. So we will not let our exasperation at the election season or the inevitability of this or that in this or that state, this will not prevent us from voting, right? We will vote. And we will vote for the candidates for whom we can muster the most trust. The ones who seem most honest and most interested in the common good of our society. Same with the ballot measures. As Christians, we don't just ask what's best for me. We ask what's best for our community. Trust is an important factor in election time. And even more imminent... Uh, a place where trust comes into play. It's Pledge Dedication Sunday. Do you trust your church? I mean, you saw those people in the video earlier, right? Do you trust those people? I think they're trustworthy. Do you? Are we earning your trust? Do you see God at work here? Not just in worship, but during the week and in mission. Not just inside our church, but outside our church. Here's where I thought about trust as a two-way street. It's not just Jesus saying, believe in me, trust in me, because he also trusts in us, right? He entrusts ministry to us. It started with that original group of 12 uh, that he trained. He also trained 70 more, but those 12 ultimately became apostles. Apostles means the sent out ones. And they were sent out to the whole Roman Empire. And they changed the world. Jesus trusted them to do that. What have we been entrusted with? I was at my Aunt Judy's last week, and she had a table, a coffee table book called Angels Out. It was a beautiful devotional book, beautiful paintings, and then each page had a little devotional on a word like trust. Actually, it was entrust was the word. It was the painter, Ann Nielsen. And there's a little quote in there that says, what have you been entrusted with and what are you entrusting to God? Take a moment, she said, to notice the mutual aspect of your relationship with God. The more we entrust to him, the more he entrusts to us. I love that reciprocity in our relationship with God. And I am humbled and awed by the way God has chosen to use this congregation over the years and continues to do so in ministry that stretches from, well, from walking with you when you're ill or discouraged, even walking with your family when you die. Uh, we come alongside the hungry and the houseless in our own urban area here, and we're willing to go to faraway places to come alongside the poor and the ill and the needy. Together, we worship intelligently and joyfully by means of these services planned by our staff. Together, 
we grow in Christ, we learn to trust him and to walk with him from nursery to childhood to youth and on through adulthood. We are doing our best to create together a safe place to grow in Christ. And that's because we trust Christ and we trust what he has entrusted to us. We aren't perfect. We're a community of flawed and sin-tinged creatures. But together, we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, trusting him to help us grow and to use us in ministry. In a few minutes, we'll invite you forward to come practice your faith. Put your faith into practice. We do this once a year. By committing yourself uh, to God and his church, as it finds expression here at Lake Grove, you'll come forward pretty much the way we do for communion. When we do that every month, uh, we come forward for communion and we receive the grace of God in the form of bread and juice and God's spirit. But now once a year, we ask you to come forward and rather than receiving, you offer yourself and all your complexity, your skills, what you do, uh, how you volunteer here, how you pray, what you give financially. And we, you may not have been prepared for this today, but we trust you to discern what your financial commitment might be and uh, we'll accept those commitments over the next few days and weeks. Uh, but really, this is a time of commitment of all that we are, all of what we do. You might come forward with a pledge card. You don't have to put anything in the basket. You don't have to come forward. But I want you to know, as you come forward, uh, that this is a sacred moment where you are saying, yes, God, I'm in, and I am glad to be part of what you are trying to do. You are a part of all those ministries you saw in the video, the ministries I was just mentioning. And so I invite you to come forward and soak up the sacred moment. Enjoy the singing, the words of what we're singing together during that time. You know, when I receive communion, they offer me the bread, I dip it in the juice, I take it and then I say something like, thanks be to God or hallelujah, or something. I invite you as you come forward to do something like that, to take a moment, to be grateful that we can be a part of what God is doing together. We can say, thanks be to God that we can do this. Thanks be to God that we are together in this. Thanks be to God that he entrusts us with ministry, that he trusts us as we try to trust him. God entrusts us with important work. It's life-giving work, and it has eternal significance. Amen? Amen.